Okay, so as you guys know, I've been working on putting this Land Rover Discovery 2 together for a while now. Um, I pretty much got the motor in and got everything hooked up. I really had a hard time trying to um, get everything recorded with everything that's going on with the baby, you know, just work, everything. But um, I'm here for a quick update. So I pretty much, like I said, pretty much got everything together. Um, here it is. I'm gonna turn the camera around but um got everything together filled up with power steering fluid i have a power steering fluid leak um but i see that it's coming from the pump itself and there appears to be a bracket that's not attached it doesn't have a hose that go to it and through further research i realized that i'm actually missing a hose which is the uh pressure hose for the power steering pump so um all the videos i've seen on it they take out the radiator and do all of this other stuff, but that's for the TD5. So I'm going to do it for the petrol uh, Land Rover Discovery 2 SE. I'm going to see if I can find an easier way to do it, and I'm going to walk you guys through it on the way. So let me turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, as you can see, this is the, the hose I'm talking about. This is the hole where the hose is supposed to go, and this is what I have. So I'm going to have to um, completely remove that high pressure hose, which goes from there and it goes all the way down to the end of the um, radiator and comes back and goes into the uh, steer box. So um, all the videos I've seen, they completely take the radiator out because it's in between the radiator and the intercooler. Let me see if I can see it. Not really. Let me see if I can see it on camera. Not really. So it's going to be on this side right here. But I'm trying to see if I can get access from the bottom somehow. I'm going to pull this plate off right here, which is, a, I believe, a 5 16 Sorry, I've been sick too. So I'm going to get that pulled off, see what I can see, and see where I can go from there. <clears throat> Okay, so I was able to get to the brackets, which is this one right here and right here. And I'm sort of able to pull it out from underneath, right? So like, I can grab it and pull it down out of here. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna pull it down through here after I get it loosened up. So I don't know how hard it's gonna be. I don't know if I'm gonna have to raise the intercooler just a little bit or what, but I, I, I really firmly believe that I can pull it through the bottom over here. And I also believe that I can push it through there to get it back in as well. So give me a second, it's a 10 millimeter. Let me show you actually. So it's a 10 millimeter bolt right here in the middle to get this off and it's usually another pn that goes in here but like i said mine is cut so in this video i'm gonna just be showing you how to get it out th this side so let me go ahead and get that and then i'll get back to you guys okay from there you just give it a slight pull forward i actually already did it but you just give it a slight pull up and it pops right out let me see if i can and that's where it goes, and that's where the threaded uh, bolt goes. So that's that's those two. So now for the moment of truth to see if I can pull it either way, really. If I could pull it out this way or pull it out from underneath, that would be great. Especially seeing that it's not that very large end on it. I'll see if I can get it. Uh, let's get to it. Okay, so it worked. Let me give you guys the rundown. So what I did was take these four bolts out. One, two. Hold on, this actually lines up here. So yeah, one, two, and one, two. You put your hand under, lift the inner cooler up slightly, and it pulls right from under there. And here it is. So now what I'm doing is I'm removing the brackets right here that holds it in place so that I can push it forward that way instead of trying to pull it out the direction I am. So to take the brackets off, it's a bolt right there on the top of the bracket. 
Let's see if I can show you guys. It's a bolt right there on top of the bracket. You take it off and the bracket just unclips off of there into two pieces. And that's the same 5 sixteenths socket to get the top of the bracket off. Let me see if I can do it on camera. All the videos I see the guys are dead ass taking the whole radiator off and I was not in the mood of doing doing that at all especially seeing that I just put the truck together I just couldn't see myself taking the radiator back off uh oh And so, like I said, you lift this. Actually, it's better to pull the piece at the bottom down first. And then, oh, sorry. And then pull the piece off the top. It literally just pulls off. Now we have just metal. And I should be able to push it through the other way because it's already pretty much out. Let's see if I can get it. Fingers crossed. If I can do enough wiggling and finagling to get it out of there. Okay, so, update. I had to remove these two screws and I had to go behind this foam right here and remove this one screw. And that'll give the radiator enough play to slide it from under there. Okay, so I finally got it off. Here it is, this L-shaped thing, or whatever you wanna call it. What I end up having to do is take off all four brackets. One, two, one, two, it's working right there, three, and four, but on this top one, I had to completely remove the bracket. So here's the two pieces. And what I did was basically just push it all the way forward. I tilted the lines up and just pulled them out the top and it came straight out. So um, that ended up getting it out. Hopefully it's just as easy getting it in. If I try to wait to make the rest of the video instead of making a part two then i kind of get lost in everything that i do so i try to do it you know when i record so uh just keep on the lookout turn on my notifications for part two and the part two will be an install um now i'm just waiting for the part to come in i literally just ordered it like five minutes ago um but I figured it'll be easier to go ahead and get it out the way because everybody was saying how much of a pain in the ass it was instead of um, waiting and doing it all the same day. But don't worry about this stuff. I'm going to get this fixed. I did this just so the bumper will fit on there. Let me see. And the bumper isn't even welded on yet. But I folded that up. Yeah, it's just, it, you know, Land Rovers. I got it rigged, so. But, yeah. Here we go. Uh, stay tuned for part two.